and he got an orange, a yellow helmet to wear, a construction helmet, and we gave him a whistle and say, Marvis, you're, you're in charge. <laughs> so I guess over here, Eddie and uh, Jones across from the station, we had a jumper on the roof one time. And this is when uh, the uh, chief uh, Gascon had taken over, and he had a guy from LA come up with them, and they were out. It was kind of a critical incident. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think uh, you were gone. I think it was Floyd was still alive there. Father Floyd was still there. He came down. Reverend Williams came down to try to talk him down and do all this stuff. And Marvis was out there with whistle directed traffic. You know, you, just, you know, you out know, and who's this guy? And we told uh, Gascon and the other guy who wants that's Mar that's marvelous Marvis. He's like our deputy. He's our deputy chief. <laughs> well, no, not the deputy chief. Well, he's not the deputy. Well, Marvis is running the traffic guy. But you know how Marvis could be. He, was, he had an important job. But Marvis was Marvis. And he was very important to me. We go to the meetings. I see some familiar faces there in the corner. But Marvis was this unique individual. He had empathy, but he never showed it. He was always quiet. He, he, he persevered, and he had fortitude that was important in this area. He, you know, he had some, you know, Demons in his background, he got over that. He did it. Just, he he wanted to work for the community, along with uh, his sidekick and wingman. Uh, I don't know who's who is Batman, who is Robin, Michael. So I mean, uh, I'm Superman. Okay, Superman, <laughs> Superman and Batman. We'll put it that. Way. But Marvis worked, worked hard, and he lived here, and he, and he went through a lot of pain. But he worked hard for the community. I was sad. I didn't see him. Uh, I tried to call him and go visit him at the when he was in hospice. But I had some myself. I had some kidney issues, so I you know I'm getting older now. And uh, I couldn't go see him, so. Uh, but it's just sad to see him because that nice turnout here at the building here. He lived here for a long time, and he was just Marvis was just a character in the neighborhood, like the Tenderloin. As I said, the Tenderloin, like David knows this. There's a lot of saints and sinners down here, and it's changed. It just breaks my heart to walk in. I live in the city and taking the Muni, and I came up, walked up Eddie, and never looked like that <coughs> one day. And I just, but at the same time, you have to use resources. At the same time, you, you always hear. People saying, "Oh, people are accountable, accountable." A lot of this is mental health issues and addiction problems. Out here. Hopefully, they'll, they'll they'll find an answer to all this. So, I mean, do the best we can. That's it. So, uh, <coughs> thank you for having me come and speak today. I said there's a lot of good people here to come. Thank you for coming out for Marvis. I think he appreciates it. And thank you for uh, uh, Michael for putting this on. I think everybody appreciates that. And Curtis, thank you for being the MC. And again, uh, Father John, and then you'll hear from David and Brian Sheehy and everybody else. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, Captain. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm always going to think of you as Captain. I know that's not the appropriate title anymore, but uh, thank you. Um, could you now please welcome up Michael? Michael Dolte, will you? Are you okay? Come up, please, Michael. Michael is the estate executor for uh, Marvis's estate. And of course, longtime friends, longtime uh, co worker, and. That's your commander's notes. If you need any tips. Okay, um, okay, my name is uh, Michael Nolte. Um, I, was, I lived in this building uh, oh. for uh, 20 years, and then I moved out 10 years ago. So some of my remarks are based on my knowledge of Marvis, as well as um, stuff that I did. I found out uh, being the uh, state executor. Um, um, so I'll start with um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Michael Nolte. I've known Marvis Phillips since 1993, and we were both uh, NERC buddies when Marvis lived on the third floor here in the Alexander. Uh, we were fellow community activists and we worked closely for many years on causes and projects Marvis had participated for the 49 years he lived in San Francisco. Now I'm going into his bio. Um, Marvis was born August 30th, 1955 in Denver, Colorado to uh, Leonard and Ethel. Yeah, yeah Ethel. Um, now, uh, his education and training, which is kind of impressive. Uh, from 1972 to 74, uh, he um, attended Brighton Senior High, 
where he learned architect and drafting. In 1974, he was uh, in the U.S. Army uh, in Missouri. He was a clerk typist and for the uh, supply sergeant. Um, in 19, in July of 1975, he received a GED from the University of Denver um, from 1979 through 1980. Um, he went to Hills College here in San Francisco where he learned drafting, plot planning, and landscape drafting. So if you hear some of the theme here, he's learned how to deal with urban planning from various sources. Um, in 1984, he uh, got a uh, training from the San Francisco Board, San Francisco uh, Community Boards for conflict resolution. If you're a resident down here, that's got to be a given, how to deal with conflicts. One of the things I've said many times, because I'm also a tenant activist, is um, when you're living in a large building, um, you have to get along with your neighbors. And they kind of like turn these buildings into like a can of sardines. And if you don't, if you're having a problem with your next door neighbor, that's where a lot of problems start, where you know you have problems with your neighbors. So um, in 1988, uh, he became the he got um, went to San Francisco uh, safe and became the Tenderloin block captain. And he learned training for that. Um, in 1988 through 1989, uh, he went to South. West College, he learned typing and data entry. In 1989, he went to San Francisco College, San Francisco City College. Uh, Marvis learned business math, uh, typing, spelling, and word processing. In 1989, he started to become a San Francisco Department of Elections poll worker. In 1995, he, uh, he received training as um, San Francisco Fire Department Neighborhood Emergency Response Team. Now, uh, Captain Garrity, or Commander Garrity mentioned the, uh, uh, the uh, yellow hat, that's NERT. So um, that's, uh, you learn training to how to deal with an emergency. Um, in 1999, Another training, which was San Francisco Police Department, CISA's Academy. In 2005, he received tenant leadership training from the uh, Mental Health Association of San Francisco. Now, these are all certificates that he's gotten from these various, or some of these places. Uh, in 2018, um, he received uh, a certificate from Little Brothers uh, Tech Alley program, and you'll probably hear more about that uh, later. Um, uh, when he arrived in San Francisco 49 years ago, he ended up um, with uh, many others uh, that come off the bus. People usually come uh, to San Francisco. Uh, back then it was uh, Seventh and Mission. They'd get off the bus. Um, that was the Greyhound bus station and you end up over on Polk Street, and so he was a street youth. Um, um, trying to survive, um, in San Francisco, he later uh, co-founded Larkin Street Youth Services. Um, in uh, January 2000, I mean, in January of uh, 1984 is when he helped start Larkin Street Youth Services. Larkin Street helps uh, bridge the uh, services for gap for street youth. Um, Mr. Phillips uh, lived in the Tenderloin at a series of single room occupancy hotels. He lived at the Alexander, which is the longest stay for 30 years. Uh, he lived at the Elm, the Ritz, the Cadillac, the Baldwin, and the Marlton Manor. 
Um, when he lived at the uh, Marlton, um, he, um, there was a fire, and that's where he got some problems with his lungs. Um, and so um, luckily, he ended up here in the, in the um, in the town, uh, in the, uh, he helped remove a lot of he helped remove a lot of people in that fire. He kept going back in. And, mm -hmm. Okay, so um, uh, Marvis Slater um, was lucky to find uh, a great friend in Mrs. Loretta Horn, um, or her aunt, um, who became his soulmate and enhanced his life. Marvis and Loretta were married on. March 19, 1996, at San Francisco City Hall. Loretta died November 6, 2009. While they were living together, Marvis and Loretta became active in many community organizations. Uh, Mr. Phillips earned numerous, uh, out, uh, numerous awards uh, from his uh, group leadership roles and continued serving in those capacities until his death. Um, Loretta was a resident on the third floor here in this building, and uh, when um, they got married, uh, Marvis moved in with Loretta, but still maintained his apartment up on the 12th floor. Um, so from, um, <clears throat> from 1981 to 2023, for 42 years, Marvis was a uh, urban planning coordinator. From 1989 to 2023, for 34 years, Marvis participated uh, in the San Francisco Department of uh, Elections and worked with other community groups in various capacities as poll worker, registered uh, individuals to vote, voter education, health, election forms, candidate forms, ballot measure forms, and did community outreach. Sometimes you'd see them. Um, out trying to uh, get people to uh, register to vote. Um, okay, um, he was also um, a community watch block captain, and he did uh, and he did that in this neighborhood, the Tenderloin. He would watch um, from his bedroom window on the 12th floor, and he would also uh, watch. Uh, out in the Alexander lobby. He was also at one point uh, the 900 block of um, Polk Street. He was also a uh, uh, block captain there. Um, he regularly contacted city officials, city agencies, and the media and participated in administrative uh, proceedings when necessary, all to, better, to the betterment of the Tenderloin. Marvis cared deeply about the well-being of his fellow building residents by taking a leadership role and volunteering to plan events and activities to offer critical advice to uh, on around uh, building safety. And more importantly, he brought together um, into this community room community meetings, um, provided civic, which provided civic engagement. Um, he also enjoyed listening to um, metal and classical music, which I don't see the connection there, but I like both. <laughs> okay. Um, so I also want to recognize uh, Marx's fellow friends uh, and activists um, that um, were involved with him uh, for many years in various capacities. So first, I want to recognize uh, Curtis Bradford, uh, and then uh, Susan Bright, put your hand up. Um, Denise Dory's not here. Otto Dufty, I don't think he's here. Uh, Dennis Eisner, um, he's here, I think, somewhere? Yeah, now? over there. Okay, I can't see. Okay. Uh, Reggie uh, was asked to be here, he's, he's not here. And then my brother, uh, John Alti. Uh, we've all been involved in many of the different causes over the years, um, and we kind of constantly kept on organizing um, and reorganizing on various causes um, to make a betterment of the Tenderloin. So uh, I want to thank you all for coming, uh, 
and uh, recognizing uh, the memories um, that I will cherish a lifetime. Uh, may Marks rest in peace. So on to the next person. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, it was great hearing some of Marvis's story. Um, I want to hear more about that you were sharing about the fire. I didn't, I've never heard that story before, so sometime I'd like to hear more about that. Um, you know what strikes me is this room was sort of central to a lot of the work that Marvis did, right? Like he holds so many community meetings in this room, and there's always some activity or some uh, uh, ballot measure, you know, that we're going to talk about in this room where he's going to come have a developer present a project to us and we're going to give feedback. I mean, it was just, he was a leader in the community, and this, this space was sort of his office, his workroom a lot of the time. And, and, um, I can just, I, it's so easy to picture him sitting here behind this. He'd set one of these tables up here with his chair and he'd be sitting up here running the meeting and uh, I'll just, I can, I can hear him now. Maybe we can name this room after him or something. I don't know, <laughs> just a suggestion. Um, but next up, would you please welcome uh, to say, share a few um, testimonials and words with us, um, David Seward from, uh, he's the Chief Financial Officer from UC Hastings Law. Thank you very much. Well, it's an honor to be here. Um, I've been in the neighborhood since 81 and in Hastings since 1994. We have a new name now because things always change. But one of the things that does not change is the fabric and character of this neighborhood and this community. Uh, I feel honored. I mean, it's such a rich community with diverse, vibrant, full of life. A lot of tragedy, but that's part of the, you know, sort of the human tapestry, the, the opera that we all live through. I first met Marvis when he was in the uh, Tenderloin Futures Collaborative with the Reverend Linda Oak, uh, a lot of you, the, the Milty Brothers, uh, Steve Dreiser, Ben Eisner, and it was really quite a, a, a gust group. We had just, when I came to Hastings, the, the relationship with the neighborhood wasn't all that great. This was uh, many decades of uh, sort of conflict between the school and the community. And I got a flavor of that. We built a parking garage, and that's when I first met Marvis. And um, it was that experience, you know, sort of not sort of embracing the community, embracing the neighborhood, listening to the community, listening to the neighborhood, listening to Marvis. It just provided such value and benefit. And I learned to respect the guy immensely, because A, he was, he was a straight up guy. He was honest, he was respectful, he was easy to respect in turn. And I just learned so much about how he engaged with people of you know, various backgrounds. And he treated everybody the same. That was with respect and compassion, and that meant a lot to me. Because to be honest with you, I found the neighborhood a little bit intimidating back in 1990, whatever it was. And um, I really learned to appreciate, enjoy, respect uh, the, the folks that live here and, and learn a lot from them. And I learned a lot from Marvis, and for that I am forever indebted. So I you know, don't have much to say, but I just, uh, it's, it's great to be here. It's good seeing a lot of people who I haven't seen. Susan, you're one of the Tenderland Futures Collaborative folks. Yeah, thanks. And uh, David, it's just, you know, and as we progress down the trail of life, we'll probably see each other more at these types of events, and I, I couldn't think of a, of a better group to travel the journey with than you guys. So you. with that, thank you very much, and, and God bless you, Marvis. Thank you, David. Um, next up, uh, we have uh, another presenter from who has known Marvis for quite some time, Kathy Mahalik. Uh, she's the executive director from Little Brothers, Prince of Dale. Hi, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to speak. Um, 
It's so interesting to go to these memorials for the older adults we serve. Little Brothers Friends of the Elderly is a nonprofit that helps older adults that are facing social isolation and loneliness. 